Pumps are critical and vital part of almost every industry. Pumps are mostly used in water dams, in the car industry for water cooling, and in fuel injection and IC engine, from energy industry, to pumping oil and natural gas, for operating cooling towers, and air conditioning systems and large power plants. Pumps are the vital parts of these complex systems. Pumps are one of the most important components in a hydraulic system, and should be dealt with thoughtfully and carefully. So let us first define what is a pump. A pump is a device which moves fluids by means of mechanical action. From one place to the other, pumps also add energy to a fluid, increasing fluid pressure. It is a hydraulic device that lifts fluids from low to high levels. The pump transfers fluid by converting the fluid's mechanical energy into pressure energy. Now move on to the types of pumps, in general. There are two main types of pumps, positive displacement pumps and rotodynamic pumps. Positive displacement pumps. In positive displacement pumps, fluid is directed into a closed volume. Energy transfer to the liquid is accomplished by movement of the boundary of the closed volume, causing the volume to expand or contract, thereby sucking fluid in or squeezing the liquid out respectively. Your heart is an excellent example of a positive displacement pump. In dynamic pumps there is no closed volume instead. Rotating blades supply energy to the fluid. Thus, dynamic pumps mostly convert velocity to pressure's energy. For these pumps rotating blades are called impeller blades. Examples of dynamic pumps are centrifugal pump and axial flow pumps. Let us discuss different types of pump and their working principles. The reciprocating or piston pump works according to the classic crank connecting rod mechanism. Let's assume that the pipeline is filled with water and that the piston is on the extreme left. If the piston moves to the right, an airless space grows in the cylinder. The atmospheric pressure above the suction reservoir presses the water from the suction pipe toward the suction valve. This one opens, and the water flows into the cylinder. When the piston is on the extreme right-hand side, the pump cylinder is filled with water. The suction stroke ends. After that, the piston will move to the left. Because of this, pressure occurs in the water that closes the suction valve and the press valve opens. The water can now flow in the press pipe and fill the press reservoir. Membrane Pump In membrane pump a membrane is moved manually or automatically up and down. This produces a suction and press action. In principle, membrane pumps do not leak because the liquid cannot penetrate the seal. This sort of pump is used where leaks are to be avoided. Such a pump is called a hermetic pump. This pump is used to deal with explosive liquids or radioactive, poison, or corrosive substances. Radial Plunger Pump The pump with radially moving plungers consists of a disc rotor placed eccentrically in the housing. There are radial holes where the plungers can slide. At the end of the plungers are slide block or guide rollers. When the rotor rotates the plungers are alternatively pushed in and out of the holes so that suction and discharge actions occur. Radial pumps have RPMs of as much as 300 with a nominal pressure of 320 bar. Sliding Vane Pump In sliding vane pump circular rotor is eccentrically placed in the stator housing. The vanes are placed in the rotor. As soon as it moves, a centrifugal force applies to the veins. This force pushes the veins against the wall of the casing. Chambers are formed between the veins, the stator and the rotor. The bottom sections become bigger, and a suction action arises. At the top, the sections become smaller, and the liquid is discharged. Sliding vein pumps have RPMs of 3000 and nominal pressures of up to 160. Screw Pump Screw pumps operate using two counter-rotating screw rotors which are engineered so that they rotate towards each other. This traps the liquid in the space between the screws of their rotors. As the screws rotate, this trapped volume decreases which not only compresses the liquid but moves it towards the exhaust. The rotating movement of the screw pushes the liquid in an axial direction. The liquid does not rotate but moves in a straight line axially. The flows go as high as 15 ohm 3 per hour and the discharge pressures as much as 100 bar. Load Pump This pump is like a gear pump but has only two or three teeth. The rotors are connected with gears but don't touch each other. 
The clearance between the rotors has to be small to have self-priming properties. Low pump is used for contaminated liquids or liquids with solid parts like yogurt from fruits. These pumps can maintain flow rate up to 600 M3 and maximum pressure of 14 bars. Gear pump. The gear pump comprises two precisely machined gears that rotate in the pump housing. One of the gears will be connected with the driving shaft, while second one is dragged by first one. On the suction side, the liquid fills a tooth cavity. And on the discharge side, the liquid is pressed away by repression. Gear pump is used when the viscosity of the liquid is too high. Internal gear pump. An internal gear pumps the rotor with internal toothing B is driven with its gear rotates in a closed housing. As the gears moves the space between the teeth is now filled with liquid. As the teeth move out of each other, this causes the liquid to move to the discharge side. Internal gear pumps have better volumetric efficiency and noiseless operation than the classic gear pump. Mono pump. In mono pump the rotor is a kind of screw with a big pitch with an intense thread and closely fitted shaft. The stator has an angle that is twice that of the rotor. This causes cavities between the stator and the eccentric rotating rotor. The cavities progress continuously from the suction to the press side. Centrifugal pumps. In a centrifugal flow pump, fluid enters axially in the same direction as the rotating shaft axis in the pump center. Liquid is discharged radially or tangentially along the outer radius of the pump casing. Among all the installed pumps in a typical petroleum plant, almost 80, 90% are centrifugal pumps. Centrifugal pumps are widely used because of their design simplicity, high efficiencies, and ease of operation and maintenance. Axial flow pump. Axial flow pumps are also called as propeller pumps. Axial flow pump utilize fluid momentum and velocity to generate pump pressure. These pumps provide high flow rate and low head. They are used to circulate fluids in power plants, sewage digesters, and evaporators. Thanks for watching and support our channel. Hope you like the video. The more subscribers we get, the better and more content I can continue making. So please subscribe, subscribe, subscribe.